National Peace Conference on Religious Tolerance and Coexistence has kicked off at the AU Commission Conference Center. South Sudanese President Salva Kiir Mayadit set to visit Khartoum. Hello, and welcome to this edition of ETV News. I'm Aida Salamon. A national conference aimed at strengthening the value of peaceful coexistence among religions in Ethiopia kicked off on Tuesday in Addis Ababa. The three-day conference is jointly organized by the Ministry of Federal Affairs and the Ethiopian Interreligious Council. Abata Hailu has more on that. The conference is being held under the theme we should strive to realize Ethiopia's renaissance through strengthening the value of religious coexistence and respecting constitutional provisions. On the occasion, Minister of Federal Affairs Dr. Shafarot Klamaram said the conference would help exploit the edge of religious respect and tolerance in Ethiopia to consolidate peace, democracy and development. It would also help bring national consensus on state religion relations, he said. Japan Inter-Religious Council for its part asserted readiness to strengthen cooperation among member institutions, build upon the existing tradition of peaceful coexistence and contribute to national development. Member of institutions would work together to stamp out the acts of extremism from the country, it said. In its opening remark at the conference, Prime Minister Halim Aram Desailing called on religious institutions to further strengthen the culture and value of religious tolerance, respect and coexistence among the Ethiopian people. The Ethiopian people have been the Ethiopians and I urge religious institutions and religious fathers at all levels to work for the existence of tolerance and ethics among their followers by creating awareness, work jointly and by organizing consultative forum. Halimaram said the government doesn't interfere in religious affairs but committed to safeguard the constitution. <laughs> The contribution of the Constitution is a lot as it clearly entails equality of religion, freedom of belief, equality of multinationalism in black and white. In addition, it comes up with a favorable environment, hence religion and government are two different entities that mainly gives individuals a right to follow their own religion. Research papers dealing with the historical background and current status of religious coexistence, as well as the roots and remedies of religious fantasism among others, would be presented and discussed in the course of the conference. More than 2,000 people from around the country are represented at the three-day national conference, which is being held at the African Union Conference Hall in Addis Ababa. Dr. Aisha Abdullahi, a Commissioner for Political Affairs, had this to say on the importance of the conference. Yeah, and we in commitment to the promotion of religious tolerance, peaceful coexistence, and mutual respect among the various religious groups in the country will go a long way to promote national unity and sustainable peace and development. The Ethiopian Kaizen Institute says private and public institutions should focus on training to implement their philosophy. The institute has provided training to, for scholars drawn from various universities and managers of different organizations on quality management. Director General of the Institute, Getaun Tadese, said the Kaizen philosophy would help put in place better economic activities and foster motivation among workers. The training co-organized co by Ethiopian Kaizen Institute and TIKA was a platform to entertain various experiences of the Kaizen philosophy. Addis Ababa Health Bureau urges NGOs to continue their best effort in providing quality health service that goes in line with the city's advancement. This was disclosed on the inauguration ceremony of Optical Center and Training Center that has been built by Mercy Care Ethiopia. 
During the ceremony, Addis Ababa Health Bureau representative, Sister Nuria, said the government's strong commitment on working together with different NGOs and other stakeholders has enabled the city to increase its health coverage to 80%. Mercy Care Ethiopia founder, Professor Badeg Bakale, on his part, said the center will provide service to low-income citizens. The center has the capacity to offer service to at least 200 citizens per day. Water and Energy Development Bureau of Gambela State said over 482 clean water facilities were constructed at a cost of over 124 million bir over the past three years. Development Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation Coordinator with the Bureau, Ayele Demena, told Ethiopian News Agency on Monday that the amenities raised the safe water coverage to 79.5% from the previous 65%. He said the state is working hard to achieve the plan to raise the clean water coverage to 100% at the end of the growth and transformation plan period. In this regard, construction of 324 clean water amenities is being undertaken during the current budget year. Upon going fully operational, these facilities will raise the water, sa the water safe coverage of the state to 92%, he said. Various development projects constructed in Armabur, Wurada, North Showa zone of Amara state, at a cost of over 17 million bir, were inaugurated on Sunday. Speaking on the occasion, Wurada Administer Tsaye Halemariam said the projects include construction of a safe water facility, primary school, and a health station. He said the safe water facility benefits 24,000 residents and raises the clean water coverage to 100%. He said the school will enable 400 school-aged children to attend education, while the health station raises the health coverage to 100%. Mexican Embassy in Ethiopia discloses that it is due to launch the second edition of Mexican Month on the 2nd of September in Addis Ababa. Briefing reporters on Tuesday about the launching of the event, Ambassador Alfredo Miranda said the move is to bring Mexican culture at the disposal of the people in Ethiopia. Miranda expressed belief that the festival would deepen people-to-people -people ties of the two countries that enjoy amicable diplomatic connections. The ambassador emphasized the show to be part to be of prominence to promote the culture of Ethiopia and Mexico that share a lot in common, being federal states of heterogeneous population. Exhibitions, Gastronomic Week, Folklore Performance, and National Day are the major events of the festival that lasts from the 2nd to the 29th of September 2013. A consultative meeting said to reflect a unique opportunity to tackle the principal governance weaknesses and often pr promised delivery of sufficient financial support for Somalia's reconstruction and recovery is in progress in Addis Ababa. The conference was urged has urged the international community to strengthen the support for the reconstruction of Somalia. In fact, the Somali government is working in collaboration with the African Union and Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, to rebuild a stable and peaceful Somalia. The Horn Economic and Social Policy Institute, HESPI, and the Economic Commission for Africa co-organized the three-day conference with the intention to help Somalia in its efforts to re restore peace and rebuild effective state institutions. The move is to nurture a Somali-centered approach to increase awareness and understanding of critical issues and challenges facing Somalia, thus informing policymakers and development partners of the best procedures for supporting locally-led initiatives in those domains. Somali professionals and academians, along with international experts on post-conflict reconstruction, are exploring to address the appropriate ways of rebuilding viable state and effective institutions in Somalia. South Sudan President Salva Kiir Mayardit is due to visit Sudan on August 30th to hold talks with his Sudanese counterpart Omar, Omar Hassan al-Bashir. The visit comes in culmination of the recent closeness between the two countries, Sudan's Information Minister Ahmed Bilal Osman said. The minister hoped that the, visit that the visit would achieve a great breakthrough in the negotiations and boost the implementation of the matrix deal between the two sides. He further expected that the recent changes in South Sudan would reflect positively on the negotiations between the two countries. 
It is to be recalled on September 27, 2012, Khartoum and Juba signed a score of agreements in Addis Ababa, including security, status of citizens, border, and oil. That is it for the morning edition of ETV News. I'm Aida Salamun. Enjoy the rest of our programs.